Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing really well today. And um, this is going to be really excited. I would love uh, for Chris and I to be in front of you right now, leading an orchestra of you playing this great music. But in this time, we just can't do that. So we're giving you the second best. And we've picked some great pieces from our new catalog, and we hope you enjoy them today. So I want you to hop on that chat. Uh, feature and let us know your thoughts and comments as we go through it. And uh, Chris is going to take us away with our first piece. Yeah, I definitely want to have this be like a real reading session, which I really loved at the ASTA session this past year, uh, and have people comment back and forth and ask questions. So we want to encourage you to do that same thing as we go along and keep this fun and casual. In a very similar way, we also have some things that we're going to highlight from each of the pieces as we talk about it, then we're going to listen to it, and then kind of move on throughout from there. So the first piece happens to be one of mine. I'm surprised. It's called Putting on the Pits. Yes, I was playing with the words. Putting on the Pits is a grade one. It does feature the sound of the hi-hat, which is either gonna be challenging and a disaster or fun for the kids. So it's kind of up to you. The other thing that could be fun or challenging is that the rhythms in this could be swinging eighth notes. So I think it would be fun. You might think it would be a disaster. I would give it a try and see how it works. We recorded it without swinging eighth notes and it works both ways. So let me see, what else do we have here? It's based on a great walking bass line and it keeps everybody involved and I think all the kids will have enjoyable parts. So here we go with Quitting on the Pits. All right, wasn't that awesome? I just love, uh, I love the sound of pizzicato. Chris, you did such a great job of uh, writing a piece that will introduce pizzicato really well. Um, if I were you and if I were teaching this piece, I would also play some recordings of all pizzicato pieces. My favorite is uh, Playful Pizzicato from Simple Symphony um, by Benjamin Britton. You would love to do that. But that's just a great way to start our session today. And I'm going to move right into our next piece. Uh, let me know if any of you have ever heard of this obscure composer. His name is Richard Mayer. Oh, Richard Meyer. Richard Meyer. 
I'm sure that all of you guys have, have heard of Richard. He's he's done it again. He's got a great piece called Musical Passport. And Musical Passport has 22 tunes from 17 different countries. And you're going to enjoy teaching this piece. Uh, it's a really uh, very creative in Richard's way. He's such a good writer. He orchestrates well. And he does an awesome job uh, presenting this piece. So uh, anyway, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to hop on the chat, click on the chat button, and then type your comments in. Don't cheat because you can see these countries at the beginning. But when you hear a tune, you recognize chat away. And let's see how many you can identify out of 22. So we hope you enjoy Musical Passport by Richard Meyer. That comment just completely blew up the chat over there. Way to go. You guys are way excited. And Richard has a way, his music has a way of doing that. It's just, it's so exciting in so many ways. And he does it at all levels. So I'm going to give you another sneak peek that we're not listening to right now. But if you go and search School by Richard Meyer, it's going to be a really great one for when we get back to school. Uh, it, he did a really great interactive project where kids that were in the school that commissioned it each wrote little poems about the different subject areas. And each section of the piece has a little musical interlude about it. Actually, it's tied together by an interlude uh, based on uh, pictures at an exhibition. It's got a little promenade theme and it ties together each one of the subject areas. 
And here's the special little behind the scenes information about it. You can see uh, we have the link over in the comments, so you can save that for later. The narration on the recording was done by none other than my kids, Jack and Ashlyn. So when you hear their voices, you'll hear them narrating. And my other son, Brian, was the recording engineer for the narration for that. So it was kind of a project that Richard indirectly involved my whole family in. So it was really super exciting. On to our next piece. We always wonder about pronunciations. Jim Palmer, Palmer, Bernados, Bernados, Gamelon, Gamelion, Gamelon Groove by Doug Spada. Doug is he's just so creative in what he does. He has a fresh style. He's always got some great rhythmic interest. This is a great one. It's also a pizzicato piece. I find myself kind of gravitate toward that sound. I just like the rhythmic textures that it creates. It only uses the D and A strings. Basses do go up to open G string. Uh, it's a very funky piece that is built on layers. So it definitely keeps groove as the title. He incorporated that into the piece. It's a, a particular cool teaching place in this is measure 17 and 21 that stood out to me are the dynamic contrasts that happen during this part. So give a listen to Gamelon Groove. All right, that is another awesome pizzicato feature piece. And I love the dynamics in it. It gives you a good variety. Um, if you look on your right side, we're gonna put up a poll for you. And I gotta tell you right now, I'm doing this web webinar from my office at school. Yes, that's right. Us Atlanta teachers in Cobb County are back at school today, uh, but we are going to be teaching virtually for an indefinite amount of time. So we're receiving three weeks of uh, instruction on how to do that. So we wanna kind of see what you'll be doing this fall. Um, are you gonna be teaching your classroom? Are you gonna be going remotely, both in the classroom and remotely? If you're uh, teaching in a variety of, of situations, and a lot of us will start out uh, maybe teaching one way and then migrate into a different way. There's lots of resources I want to share with you that will help you out a lot. ASTA just published a COVID-19 uh, document that you can find on the ASTA web that will talk to you about different ways to handle both of those environments. Um, we also, there are lots of online options that you can use either in person or remotely. One of my favorites is Smart Music. Smart Music is a great online uh, program. They have over 1,500 selections for string orchestra, over 5,000 uh, titles total. 
a hundred additional selections for full orchestra. It's just a wide variety. The complete Suzuki material is on there. Uh, sound innovations, all of our method books are on there at the premium level. And so your students can access those and just announced Smart Music is gonna be able to print uh, some of the, their music off of the screen. So you're no longer tied to the screen when you work on Smart Music. So that's one of the, um, one of the things that I'm doing. And Smart Music also launched something uh, with Alfred that we love called Compose Yourself Series. And these are uh, six actual lessons where your students can go online. They're ready to go. You don't have to do anything. Just give them the link. Um, and Michaela might be able to pull that up uh, sometime during our webinar. But those lessons are all about composition. Chris did one. I did one on arranging. Um, some A lot of our authors were included in that. And they're put together lessons so that your kids can experience what it's like to create and compose music. So it looks like about half of you will be teaching both in the classroom and remotely, and then 25% uh, remotely, 15% uh, just in their classroom. And I am sure also that that will change. It's changing every day. There we go in the chat. Michaela uh, put a link to Compose Yourself. Check that out. That's a really cool lesson site. But um, I just want to wish you, wish you guys a lot of luck in your endeavors. It's, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but you know what? Our job is to create better musicians and better music lovers. And I am certain that we're going to be able to do that either remotely or live in session. But you know what? I'm ready to get back to the music. And our next selection is an arrangement that I did. It's called Symphonia in D Major. And it's originally written by J.C. Bach. And I got to tell you, I love playing music from the classical era, with um, particularly in, in the J.C. Bach installments when the composers were just now experimenting with dynamics and crescendo and diminuendo. Kids love the classical style. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to play a real symphony. This symphony in D major was written for full orchestra, and I reduced that to string orchestra. It's a grade three, so I would say an advanced middle school or maybe one of your younger high school orchestras would love it. Uh, so I hope you love it too. So here is Symphony in D by J.C. Bach.
That's an awesome piece. And I, I'm thinking back to when we were, Jim, you can even chime on here for a second, if you don't mind. Put your, put your lovely face back on the screen. Hey, there he is, everybody, Jim Palmer, <laughs> right there. <laughs> so when Jim was doing this arrangement, it was really great. People don't know exactly how the uh, editorial process works. So I was just thinking, Jim, that one section where you have both violin one and violin two playing the the, the high the high part, digga, 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 when it comes down the arpeggio, and we have the great Bob Phillips with us here too, so he can chime in on the chat. Uh, but I just it stood out to me in that one, and I actually remember when you and I were talking through this arrangement, and I wondered why we wanted to do that in those both instruments in the same octave, because I think originally they might have been in, in two octaves. And you said, I want the strength to come through on that by putting them in that together and to give kids that opportunity. And right now, months and months later, when I'm listening to this recording, even after the recording sessions and watching it now, it jumped out to me and had such a presence to it. Uh, and, I, and I just think, yeah. How, actually, what can you tell everybody just really quickly a little bit of your process of what did you do going from the original and translating it into this kind of arrangement, thinking as a teacher? So the first thing I did is I wanted to find that classical piece that I thought would uh, teach different both styles and dynamics. And I fell in love with this piece. And obviously it's for full orchestra and it's an 11 minute movement. So I needed to reduce it, first of all, to three minutes. And that was the first task I did was pulling out the most important parts that represented the melody really well. And then as I laid out the arrangement, I had to take some of the wind parts and put it into the string parts and think about overlapping balance and issues like that. And so um, through that, I developed this, this arrangement and I'm, I'm really happy with it. Thank you. And I also want to, uh, and this would be a great time to tell everybody the recordings are real pros. Chris and I get the opportunity to sit in the recording studio and they are real pros. And it means so much that they're able to play everything that's on the page to, to provide great resource recording for our teachers. Which is the perfect lead in for this next piece, which is by Bob Phillips. So Bob, if, when you're, if you're still over there listening, feel free to chime in when we start playing it. It is called Streaks of Thunder. This one is so much fun, but relating it to the recording studio, like Jim was mentioning, it kind of gave me a little bit of panic. We were a little crunched on time and I was a little concerned. Can we get through everything? This piece looks really hard, but everybody, Jim and Bob and Danae Witter reassured me, no, 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 this is gonna be just fine. And everything lays so well under the fingers and it is actually, it's one of my favorites in the entire catalog throughout all the music that we're putting out this year. It's just a terrific piece. Again, it's a common theme that everybody gets to be part of the action and everybody has great parts. And I love that every part is thought through in that way. My notes on this one, it is a grade three, although it strikes me as a little bit more challenging, but it does lay well in the fingers. Uh, it is very catchy. The melodic material is very catchy. There's some great contrasting sections in it. Some really interesting harmonic shifts. I'm, I gravitate towards things that are rhythmic, catchy, and also a little bit different harmonically. And Bob did a fantastic job with this one. And Bob, just so you know, the melody that comes in at measure 17 was the one that got stuck inside my head over and over and I could not get rid of it. So it's a positive, good type of thing to get stuck. So please enjoy and talk about Streaks of Thunder.
You got to love that. Uh, Bob, uh, type in your chat here for us and um, tell us a little bit, if you can, about what uh, what that piece was about. Uh, I Bob's a lot of Bob's music always has stories behind it. And like I said in the chat area there, I just love um, I love his harmonies. I love the American sound that he gets and his use of the different modes and modality. Um, to really make his music interesting and unpredictable. It's just just really great. Uh, he's also got a number of pieces that are gonna be available in our catalog as well. So make sure you check out uh, Bob Phillips on alfred.com. And I know Chris and I have really appreciated his mentoring and leadership that he's given us and continues to give us. We're just, we just love your music, Bob, and we're so glad that we're able to play some of it for you today. Um, our next, uh, our next piece of music we're going to play is by a composer that's very new to our area. Oh, there's, there's Bob. It was a, a commission, um, two high schools in one district. I love that. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so I hope you guys check that, uh, that piece out. It was, it was really great. Um, our next piece that we're going to be doing, Prelude in G Minor, it's originally a piano work by Rachmaninoff. But we have a great arranger who's been uh, sending pieces here to Alfred uh, called Otto Tanner, and he's done an excellent job with this piece. I think you're going to really, really love it. And one of the things that I think as an arranger that's really hard is transferring piano music to string orchestra music, and Otto has done a brilliant job with that. So we really hope you enjoy Prelude in G Minor by Rachmaninoff, arranged by Otto Tanner.
I loved that piece the second that I heard it. Uh, and going back to like what goes into putting a piece into print like this, I got to compare what Tanner did with the original. And I actually just loved both of them. And I thought what he did was a really genuine arrangement drawing and a really great arranger takes the original and makes it maintain like the same feel of the original. And I think that's what really makes that piece fantastic is it just kind of draws you in and keeps you there and it's very engaging. Uh, tying back into what Jim mentioned earlier with the poll and finding out what everybody's going to be doing, uh, I have a question and this isn't really a poll, but this is something you can add in the chat and some of the discussion that's going on over there, which is a little bit about the idea of flexible instrumentation. Apparently this is all the rage. You might have heard about this. And a lot of times you hear about it on the wind side. You hear about the band flex charts. And really, as my good friend David Pope pointed out, it's not just band that uses flex charts. They're actually string charts that we let band people play. And the concept of using a flexible instrumentation piece is very important because of all those different challenges that teachers are facing and yet unknowing of what the situation is going to be. So I think what we'd like to know is how interested are you in using a flexible instrumentation piece? Just so you know, we at Alpha Music are, we have designed a brand new flexible instrumentation model that's going to be retrofitting our wind catalog that includes strings both in, in the band and outside of the band. So they can live alone or with any mixture and combination. So there's going to be about 20 pieces in this new format uh, that is going to be available hopefully starting in September. There's 20 of them or so in production right now. But also going forward, we're going to be producing uh, flexible string pieces. So we're, gonna, we're going to be providing supplemental parts for all instruments. So if you have five violins, you can play all five. You can play a piece with five violins. Five violas, five violists. Uh, if you have five cellos that you want, it's gonna be a cello ensemble or any combination of all the parts. So you would have, for example, violin one included, violin two, but then a supplemental violin three, which would be the viola part, violin four, which would be the cello part, and violin five, which would be your string bass part all transposed and appropriately voiced for that group. So that's something to kind of look forward to for you. But also I wanna mention right now, we have our Bellwin Orchestra. So if you wanna kind of talk about that, are you gonna use some flex pieces? What types of things do you think you would like to see in that? And kind of start that dialogue while I'm doing this next little spiel for you, which is I wanna mention our Bellwin Orchestral Reading Session, which is going to be September 9th. I know that's a little bit of a ways away, but it's gonna be an ongoing thing. This new format is really interesting. We're looking forward to doing that, but we have so much great music, both in the Highland Etling, Etling side and also on the Bellwin side. We wanted to split them up into two sessions so we can present enough of it to you, but that is September 9th. You can register for that one. Uh, Mikhail will put the link there for you to register for that. And we also are going to be doing another session about the Flex series, both on the wind and string side, and also what we're doing specifically for strings on August 21st. Make sure that you're on the list to get notified, notified when that registration opens. So that's August 21st to learn a little bit more about the Flex series and September 9th for our Bellwin reading session and join us for that as well. We'll come back and take a look. I think we will hopefully have some time for questions and answers later on where we can revisit some of the questions coming up and some of the concepts in the chat. But we're gonna go on to our next piece now, which is Allegro from Concerto Grosso, Opus 6, number one by Handel, which was amazingly arranged by Debbie Baker Monday, who I think we're all familiar with, with her and her expertise and just her, every time I see Debbie, she's got a smile from ear to ear and she's surrounded by people because uh, we just love her and she's fantastic. Not only is she a great person, but her, her writing and her when she sends a piece and you know it's going to be great and you know it's going to work and it's just the right material. Uh, and I'm so glad that we have this one under our care. It's very expertly arranged. I found it to be very festive and energetic and it's rhythmically enjoyable for everyone and it's super engaging. It's a great two and a half. And here for you is the Allegro from Concerto Grosso by Handel.
I love Concerto Grosso's or Concerto Grossi, however you want to say it. Um, and Debbie does such a great job arranging those. If you notice, there aren't solo parts, but if you want to be creative, you could always uh, feature solo sections for that in your performance. But those are really great pieces that kids love the style. It gives you a good opportunity to teach some uh, great technique. And, and that particular arrangement is a great introduction uh, it, for when you're getting ready for your older students to do the real the real, uh, the real additions of those. So Debbie did a, such a great job with that. Um, I'd like to move on to our next piece. It's called All Hands Hoe. Does anyone know what Hoe means? Uh, light up the chat if you know it's, it's spelled H-O-A-Y, H-O-A-Y. Not to be confused with All Hands Ahoy, but Ohe. Does anybody actually now, David Pope, no cheating. You're not allowed to Google it. So I just want to make sure that you're that you're following the rules here. But I don't see any takers on that one. So I'm going to tell you what it actually means. It actually means all hands on deck for some serious work. Um, and this piece by Anthony Granada is a great sort of pirate feeling piece. Um, it's time he wants the uh, string players to get their fingers moving and it's featured in F sharp natural minor, the key. So they get an opportunity to play in a key that they normally don't get to play in. The melody is passed around to all the sections. It features the violas in a jaunty contrapuntal ending. So this is a great piece. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, I particularly love pieces like this since my mascot at Alatuna High School are the Buccaneers. So I always try to do a pirate themed piece at least once a year. So we hope you enjoy All Hands Hawaii. I love Anthony's writing, and if you ever get a chance to talk to him in person, he is just so energetic, and he loves teaching, he loves students, he loves music, and he's just like just a terrific human being. And I mentioned in the chat that that one to me was also very picturesque. I could always think through a storyline, and I think it, your students could imagine that kind of a scene as well. We have a bonus piece. It's one of these pieces that stuck with me from the again from the first time I heard it. Uh, it is by Katie O'Hara Labrie, and Katie is, she to me is just a wonderful writer and another great human being. We're, we're very blessed to be having a lot of great people that surround us, both at work and, and in the world, and Katie is one of them. And the piece is called With Gratitude, and I, I wasn't going to read anything, but I think it's important to read her program note because it kind of explains a little bit about the piece. So I'm just going to read an excerpt from her program note. 
This piece was in honor of a student who passed away. Before she died, this sweet girl shared a great gift with the world. Sadie, who was often called Sadie Bug for her love of ladybugs, always found a way to be grateful for the people and things around her, even in her darkest hours. With this in mind, her family started a hashtag year, year of gratitude campaign with the goal of challenging people to reflect on what they're grateful for each day. So please consider sharing what you're grateful for on social media with the year of gratitude hashtag in memory of Sadie. So the inspiration for a piece is incredibly important. And I know that it would really move Katie when she wrote the piece and when we discussed it as we worked through it uh, through the editorial process. And I just fell in love with the piece for not only the meaning behind it, but actual the musical content that's in it as well. So I really wanted you to enjoy this piece and to also share in a little bit of this paying it forward concept because even though we're challenged with so much in our lives and with our students and everything that surrounds us, there sure is a lot that we can be grateful for. I'm grateful for being here with you today, for getting to work with Jim and David and Bob and all the people that I'm surrounded with. So let's all share in a little bit of Katie's sentiment in honor of her student with gratitude.
I'm really glad to see the comments kind of supporting exactly how I feel about that piece. And we actually literally just added that probably about three or four minutes before we started. I said, you know, there's one that I really would like to share today. And, and that was really it. And I think it's, it just kind of sums up a little bit of what we're feeling, which is gracious for all that we have. Uh, we, don't, we do have a couple of minutes for questions. So if you want to quickly get anything that's in there uh, in the chat, you can gather up a couple of questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, and Jim's gonna share a couple of links and ideas with you right now while we get some questions going. Hi again, everybody. I just wanna thank you for being here. Um, and I wanna thank Michaela. She's the uh, our producer behind the scenes who does such a great job to keep Chris and me from looking like total idiots. And that's almost impossible, but yeah. she does a great job <laughs> helping us out. Um, there's, we're going to put up some links in the chat here in a little bit, and the links will be links to our promo and to a survey that we'd like for you to fill out to see what needs uh, that you would have in the future that we can help you with. We also are offering a professional learning cert, uh, certificate, and whether or not your district accepts it, you can download that certificate to uh, say that you were here for an hour, and we'll be sending out information on replaying this video ne next week. And when you see those links, feel free to share the uh, replay of the video with anyone so that you can share pieces that you like to. Okay. Jim, we have questions here. Um, Since you're doing the remote learning, you're already yeah. invested in this. Maybe you can share a couple of ideas of how can you use some of today's rep or something. Uh, how would you apply one of these at home? You're going to be remote, so how can you use new music to connect students with that from, from a distance? Well, Cobb County is uh, is doing, we, we have our own platform now, and we're all forced to use this brand new platform. So we can't use Zoom. However, the great, the great thing is that our platform is going to integrate different apps like Frit. Flipgrid and, and I can use smart music with my students. So one of the very first assignments I'm going to have them do is I'm going to have them explore new music and I'll give them resources like Alfred.com and smart music and they'll explore uh, the resources and on smart music, they'll actually get an opportunity to play along with the pieces and then they're going to write a reflection and tell me what they would like to do. And then once uh, once we start to work through some things, I'm, I've got, we are synchronous instruction. So I'll see the kids a certain time every day and I'll do a lesson by rote. I'm gonna write exercises for them. And then I'll monitor them as individuals as they work through the repertoire that we're gonna provide. And Chris, I think right now, Alfred and other publishers are allowing teachers to, uh, to give uh, password protected PDFs of music that they've already purchased and copy. I think that's still in copyright. Does that sound right to you? So they that can sounds like another department that I can't, I don't know exactly what the uh, what the details are on that. But everybody's doing their best to try to support this unique situation. So I'm sure there's accommodations being made all yeah. over. I I would say that the best advice that I can give to everybody is the people who are going to approach it as I've got a remotely teach a large group performance evaluation or contest or festival, they're gonna fail. But the teachers who are gonna say, I wanna provide my kids with opportunities to grow as independent musicians. And then once we're back together, apply everything they learned virtually into their ensemble, those teachers are gonna really succeed. And those kids in the long run are gonna become better musicians and they're gonna also succeed. Yeah, I'm finding that a lot of conversations I have with teachers, they're kind of being pushed into being even more creative. It's already a creative group, right? Music teachers are creative people. And it's even pushing some people out of their normal comfort zone of creativity and making them do things different. I think something like we're doing right now would be great for students to be a part of. You know, why don't you as a teacher host your own reading session and have a discussion like this with your students? Why, why did this piece make it onto this list today? What do you think? What's your opinion? You can have dialogue about that. Uh, another suggestion is to use even some of these videos and actually do a live play along. What if we did a reading session like this, but instead of us looking at the video, you can look at the video or put the PDF on your screen and actually play along while we play it. So I think it's kind of making everybody think a little bit differently. And, and that shouldn't be too challenging for a group like this because everybody's created from the start. The other thing that I really like that I'm seeing happen in, their, in our musical community is just sharing. Everybody's sharing their great ideas and trying to help one another. 
I know that on our side of it as a publisher, we're doing our best to create resources that are going to support what teachers actually need and to try to get it into your students' hands as quickly as we can and to try to give you, so your feedback, it really is valuable to us and it really does influence what it is that we do. Uh, so with that in mind, I think the last thing I want to give you guys is our contact information. So that way, if you do have something to suggest, we are very much in, in contact. You can feel free to email me at cbernatos at gmail.com. That's my personal email. You can email me there too. That's okay. Or my work email, cbernatos at alfred.com. Either way, I'm going to get your message and I'll get back to you as best as I can with any kind of answers uh, and, any, and anything that we can do to provide help and assistance, not only during this time, but moving forward. Because I think a lot of what we're learning about what we're doing today is going to continue to be useful when things get back to normal and whatever that actually means. So I do want to thank you for joining us today and for being with us and giving up some of your afternoon and hope you join us again when we come back for the Bellwin reading session on September 9th and also our flex session on August 21st. I've got to check my calendar every single day. So thank you very much uh, for being here with us today. Great hanging out with you, Chris. Same, Jim. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Everybody have a great day. Good luck out there.